So our next set of poetry poems here are uh, from pe about people. This is called Campfire, and they're talking about eating grasshoppers for a summer night snack. That is gross. I'm no longer hungry. Campfire. Just think, when mother was my age, she could build a fire with sparks from rocks, catch a bunch of grasshoppers, and roast them whole for a summer night snack. Get me a good stick, she says, thin but strong, and I bring her one from the woods behind our tent. On the way back, I see a brown bag by her feet. Could it be? Uh. When the fire is spitting ready, she reaches in the bag, rustling, and hands me one big, fat, luscious marshmallow. Janet Wong. Okay, so this poem here, even though there's a campfire and it says campfire, really it's, it's like a big setup, and you can hear the whole thing is set up and the rhyme, just the rhythm of it, there's no real rhymes going on. Is setting you up for getting you all worried about a one big, fat, luscious marshmallow. So it's not the grasshopper you were fearing. So that whole poem seems to be set up so you think it's going to say grasshopper and get grossed out. And then it says marshmallow. Uh, similar to what the mother was uh, doing to the child, tricking her, things like that, in a fun way. All right, here's uh, Jack Pulaski, another famous poet uh, for kids. Writes a lot of good, funny poems. Okay. Be glad your nose is on your face. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. Oh. That clearly would not be a treat, mm -mm. for you'd be forced to smell your feet. Ah. Your nose would be a source of dread were it attached atop your head. What? It soon would drive you to despair, forever tickled by your hair. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe, for when you were obliged to sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. Your nose, instead, through thick and thin, remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. Jack Perlutsky. All right, so first of all, it's, it's silly. You know, it's funny, it's got good funny imagery. It's got a rhyme scheme, right? Hopefully you can see it. Face place, so that's A-A. -A. Then not lot, B-B, and it'll continue. Nose, toes, treat, feet, right? Dread head, despair, hair. B, catastrophe, or would be catastrophe. Sneeze, breeze, thin chin, place, face. I mean, and maybe the poem's telling you to be happy with yourself, with your body, with, with your, don't look in the mirror and think you're ugly. You know, be glad your nose is on your face. You know, kind of like yourself, right? All right, here we go. And the next one is Reggie. Reggie. It's summertime, and Reggie doesn't live here anymore. Mm. He lives across the street, mm. spends his time with the round ball. Mm. Jump, turn, shoot through the hoop. Spends his time with arguments and sweaty friends, and not with us. He's moved away, comes here just to eat and sleep, and sometimes pat my head. Then goes back home to run and dribble and jump and stretch and stretch and shoot thinks he's Kareem and not my brother. Eloise Greenfield. So this poem uh, doesn't have much rhyming, but it has a lot of rhythm, a lot of imagery. And I think if you can tell, they don't say it, but there's a lot of basketball in here. Hoop, round ball, right? 
that so Reggie's a baller and he's left his sister kind of alone because he's grown up. Uh, maybe you have some older sisters or brothers who've kind of hang out with their friends more now because they're teenagers. That happens. That's not their fault. That's normal. And this is a poem about remembering that time when, when her brother kind of left her for a while. I mean, he was still there, patted her head, wasn't being mean, wasn't locking her in a closet. But, you know, maybe you can identify with this. Maybe you, you have a younger um, sibling you're starting to leave more for your friends and don't play with as much. I don't know. Maybe your older teenage sibling is out and about. And by the way, Kareem would be like saying um, Shaq or Kobe or LeBron, right, or Steph. Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the best basketball player in the uh, 70s and did very well in the 80s as well. I think he still leads the... Uh, oh, no, except for Jordan. I think he's Actually, I think he still might have the most points all time. Not most points per game, but most points. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, very good center, won lots of championships. Uh, but that's why th this poem, I think you can identify with more than you think. So it's getting that feeling out. That's what poetry can do. All right, what are pockets for? Ode to Pablo's uh, tennis shoes. All right, so uh, I apologize. What are pockets for? So this is a poem by David McCord who did uh, Bananas and Cream. I'll have to read it. What are pockets for? An old piece of sash cord, a knob from a door, a small U magnet if you can find it, a sprung clock spring with a key to wind it, oodles of marbles, a twist of copper wire, a baseball calendar, a flint for fire, one soiled jack of hearts or the five of spades, that unshown copy of your last month's grades. Two colored pebbles, one hickory nut. A shell, some fish line with three feet of gut. A cog out of something which never did run. A cellophane of candy. I'll give you one. Your first circus ticket stub. The snap you took. Of the clown on the slack wire before it shook. A flash bulb, a dirty green stamp, the long missing part of your bicycle lamp, one thin pair of pliers to ply or to nip, one old zipper fastener with nothing to zip, that half-busted harness bell you found inside the barn on the farm, and the buckle too wide for its three-inch strap, and a whole lot more of stuff. Did you say what a pocket's for? So... Boy, he's listening to a lot of imagery here of very useful, okay, useless things, right? These things don't matter. They don't work. They're old. So it's kind of a joke about what are pockets for, a lot of silly things. And this is Ode to Pablo's Tennis Shoes. So this doesn't have a rhyme scheme very much, but the imagery is great, and there's great personification, like the tongues hanging out exhausted of his sneakers. It's a really good uh, imagery. So let's see here. Uh, it's kind of comparing uh, Pablo's tennis shoes to Pablo. And you'll see a lot of personification in it. They wait under Pablo's bed. Rain beaten, sun beaten, a scuff of green at their tips from when he fell in the schoolyard. He fell leaping for a football that sailed his way. But Pablo fell and got up green on his shoes with the football out of reach now it's night pablo is in bed listening to his mother laughing to the mexican novelas on tv his shoes twin pets that snuggle his toes are under his bed he should have bathed but he didn't dirt rolls from his palm blades of grass tumble from his hair he wants to be like his shoes, a little dirty from the road, a little worn from racing to the drinking fountain a hundred times in one day. It takes water to make him go, and his shoes to get him there. He loves his shoes, 
cloth like a sail, rubber like a lifeboat on rough sea. Pablo is tired, sinking into the mattress. His eyes sting from grass and long words in books. He needs eight hours of sleep to cool his shoes, the tongues hanging out, exhausted. Gary Soto. Okay, and now we have Dream Variation by Langston Hughes. Yeah, uh, so this would be a fun poem to read. Uh, but this, again, is uh, similar to that patch of old snow. This is a college or high school poem. Langston Hughes, very famous poet, um, uh, African-American poet, great. I, I love a lot of his poems. Uh, but I remember reading them in college and high school. So check this one out. It's short. So. Dream Variation to fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. That is my dream. To fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, Whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest at a pale evening, a tall, slim tree. Night coming tenderly, black like me. Langston Hughes. Now, there's a lot of twirling, good imagery there, I'm sure you've noticed. And uh, there's a, many interpretations of this. One may be just uh, to be in the day and kind of do what you want. And that's fine, and that's good. But if we notice, it, it is a lot the white day, black like me. Uh, so this poem, I mean, I feel it's about racial equality or, or inequality. He's dreaming of a time that during the white day he can be himself and not have to worry about behaving properly for some kind of white culture. And he can, at night, when he's at home, he can be himself. And uh, so that, that could be an interpretation of that. I mean, who knows? It's many. All right. And poetry is allowing different interpretations. You know, you, as long as you defend your answer, you can uh, make a poem to be, you know, however you want it to be, especially when you write it. But everyone will hear it differently and maybe interpret it. All right, so uh, awesome, and bye.